What parts of pronunciation are key to sounding natural in American English pronunciation? Let's take a look with the help of Tarane. Hi guys, this is Jeff with Fluent American, and today we're doing some analysis of Tarane, who is an Iranian actress, Persian speaker. And I think she speaks great English, and I want to kind of just analyze some of the things that she's doing that make her sound natural, and also some things that may make her sound a little bit less like a native speaker you would encounter in North America. We're specifically going to be looking at things like linking, contractions, the pronunciation of some vowel sounds, stress, and things like that. So let's get started with linking. It is a bit of an excitement. So one thing that you can do to sound more natural in American English is to link these types of sounds. When a word ends on a consonant and your next word starts with a vowel, you can shift that consonant onto your vowel sound. For example, it is, it is. So notice that T is going to link with the I. So it's going to sound like it, this this it's also going to take on like a fast d sound so instead of saying it is in american english you're more likely to pronounce it as it is it is for more information about the fast d and when this happens you can take a look at our other video it is a bit of an excitement don't forget to subscribe to the channel another type of linking that you'll see in american english is going to be when a word ends on a consonant and the next word starts on a consonant holding the breath. Take a listen to this. Well, it's my first time on a red carpet in Cannes. So there, you can hear her saying red carpet. There's a little bit of a breath between that D and that C. And what you're often gonna hear native speakers do in the US is you're gonna hear them remove the breath. So instead of saying red carpet, you'll often just hear red carpet, red carpet, red carpet. So again, you're holding the breath and releasing on the next word. There's nothing wrong if you say red carpet. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a common tendency that you're gonna hear a lot of native speakers use is to hold the breath and release it on the next word. Well, it's my first time on a red carpet in Cannes. Another aspect of sounding natural in American English is the use of contractions. How are you? Very good, I cannot speak French. Now you're gonna hear her say, cannot, cannot. And there's nothing wrong with that again, but the general tendency you're gonna hear among native speakers is to use the contracted form. Like I can't, I can't speak French. I can't speak French instead of I cannot speak French. Now there are times when you may want to use cannot in the full form, especially if you're trying to show emphasis that it's really, really important to you that you can't do something. Like I cannot accept this or I cannot do this anymore, something like that. But in a general situation like this, I think it may have been a little bit more common to use the contracted form. How are you? Very good, I cannot speak French. Another common aspect of American English pronunciation is the use of reductions. To give you an example, the word enough, enough. You may hear some people pronounce it as enough, like e enough, but because the stress is on the second syllable, it's much more common to reduce the first syllable. So instead of saying enough, you may hear a lot of people pronounce it as enough. Compare this though to how she says this. How is it to work with Monsieur? It's been terrific. 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 Notice how she says the word terrific there. I would suggest normally saying that with more of a reduction for the first syllable. So instead of terrific, a little bit more ter. Terrific. Terrific. How is it to work with Monsieur? It's been terrific. Another example of a case where you can reduce a syllable is here. So, uh, the, the comfort comes from the knowledge that... Comfort. Comfort. You can hear her saying more comfort, comfort. And that's something that you hear a lot, um, for instance, from speakers, especially from like the Middle East. But again, typically that's going to get more of a schwa type sound. It's like k, k, comfort. So instead of comfort, more comfort. Another little thing that can make you sound much more natural in American English is linking ah sounds with nasals by adding a breath through your nose. Listen to this. Well, I'm actually very comfortable whenever I'm in front of his camera. So there I heard more calm, but I, I would really recommend saying more cam, 
am. Do you hear that? Am. Again, we have this a ah sound that's followed by the letters N or M or NG. You're often going to hear a little bit of a breath come out of your nose before that last letter. So again, here I would suggest camera. Cam. Do you hear that? Cam. It breaks into two part. Am. Am. Camera. That sort of shift, again, where you have like A N, A M, A N G, is very, very common in American English that you'll see in North America. Well, I'm actually very comfortable whenever I'm in front of his camera. You also want to watch out for your TH sounds. For instance, here. We grew together. Together together. For TH, my biggest suggestion is to just very, very, very lightly press the tip of your tongue against your top front tooth. You don't need to stick your tongue out. You don't need to put your tongue in between your teeth. That's a little bit too much work. You just need to have some very light contact with your top front tooth. And again, like together, there. I would also recommend practicing this by just seeing how long you can hold the TH sound for. See if you can hold it for two, three, four seconds. There, there, there. If you make it too fast, it's going to sound like a D sound, like together. But it's not together. You want together, together. We grew together. One of the reasons why I think she sounds very fluent and comfortable in English is because I think she uses stress patterns very, very well. English is a stress-timed language, so your listener is always trying to identify what words you're stressing and what words you're not stressing. Take a look at this example. But I'm, but I'm very happy about it. Again, in this case, she was stressing the word happy. Happy. It's the word that stands out the most. Listen to it again, and I think you'll agree. And I'm, but I'm very happy about it. Hey guys, looking for a pronunciation analysis of your own speech? You should be in our Telegram group. Visit patreon.com slash fluentamerican. You can also hear this sentence too, which has great stress patterns, which I'll identify for you. And, well, I'm actually very comfortable whenever I'm in front of his camera. Other parts of her pronunciation that you noticed, that you liked, or that you found difficult? Be sure to let us know in the comments.